everybody. It's Mrs. Hinger, and I'm here with Cocosa Springs Middle School Science to talk to you about some exciting information we're going to be learning next. We've got a few guest speakers today. We're going to look at some of the early fathers of chemistry, the ones who have uh, markedly established the different models of an atom, and we're going to see how that model of an atom has changed in our understanding throughout history. The people we're going to be hearing from today are multiple, so get ready. Uh, we're going to hear from a Democritus, from a gentleman named John Dalton. Also, we have J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, and last but certainly not least, Niels Bohr. We're in for some real treats today. So let's go ahead and bring out Democritus. He's our first guest speaker, and everybody wish him a warm welcome. Hello to all of you. <laughs> Hello. You're here to talk to us today uh, about what matter is made up of. And I know you have had many thoughts about that. We are here to talk about my life. It is a show about me, Democritus. Well, we, we do want to know about you, don't get me wrong, but this isn't exactly a show about you. It's about the basics of chemistry. No, it's not a show about me. Why not a show about me? You don't want a show about me, but you want me on your show? Huh. <laughs> it's a show about me. It's a show about me. Show about me. Yes, yes, show about me. Democritus. Okay, all right. Go ahead, T tell me something about yourself, and um, we'll just go from there. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, my name, Democritus. Yes, yes. I was born in Greece. I not die in Greece, but I die in Greece. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 cheerfulness. Cheerfulness. <laughs> Hey, I gotta ask you something. You seem to be laughing a lot, and I'm, I like to laugh too. I'm not sure where the humor is though. Can you, uh, what's that all about? What's going on there? Well, I, I am known as laughing philosopher. <laughs> I'm funny to say, but I'm known as laughing philosopher. Wow, that's, that's interesting. So you're saying you're not actually a scientist, you're a philosopher? That seems weird. We're trying to talk about chemistry and the basics of chemistry and what an atom is like, but you're not into science? Makes no sense. No, no science. No, science not thing, but uh, thinking about thoughts and thoughts to think and thinking thoughts. What thoughts are there to think, and how can you think the thought? That philosophy. <laughs> philosophy. Yes. Yes, philosophy. Okay. All right. Okay, then. So you didn't do any experiments or anything. You were just thinking about thoughts and about matter and about what makes up stuff. Okay. I guess that's all you had to do back in 400 BC is think things. 400 BC? I, I do not know 400. What does BC mean? I don't know. Is time really a thing? Do we know time? I don't know we know time. So, not really science or science experiments, just thinking about what's around you, the world around you, and that's how you came up with your ideas, I guess, about matter. Hopefully you'll tell us about that. Yes, yes, I tell you. I tell you about Democritus and Atomas, Atomas, Atoman, Atomas. A Greek word mean indivisible, indivisible. Oh, cool, cool. So our word, this is neat, is atoms, which I'm sure came from your original word Atomas. And you came up with this idea and this concept of atoms or Atomas before there was even scientific experimentation. You just thought it up. What were you thinking? How did you come up with such a cool idea? 
Take the thin, cut in half. Take that half, cut in half again. Cut in half again, cut in half again, cut in half again. Finally, you have something so small, not be able to cut. Can't cut it. It cannot be divided more. That piece called aptomas means indivisible. Indivisible. Cannot divide it anymore. Very small, very small. Great. Can you tell me anything more about the um, properties of the nature of atomas? What else were they like? How did they behave? Yes, I tell you about atomas. Atomas, uh, it, any size, any size atoma, uh, atoma be small size, it be smaller size, lots of size atoma, and maybe big size, big size atoma, come in all size atoma. They come in colors and all size. Okay, great. So they had lots of different sizes, but whatever size it was, it couldn't be cut any smaller. Was there anything else about an atoma that you think is important for us to know? Atomas? Solid. <laughs> no space, no air, no vacuum, just solid, complete solid, like this, solid all the way through. No space, just solid. One thing can't cut it up. But we might have different size of atoma. And they go together, they repel. They go together, they repel. <laughs> very fun, very, very fun, very fun. And atomas, they, they stick together. Sometimes they stick together. Okay, just to be clear, they're solid. How do they stick together? What makes them stick together? What's the force that holds them together? Yes, glad you asked, glad you asked. So, Atomas, they have a, uh, hooks, hooks on them to cause them to stick together. And a hook, hook stick, stick, uh, and now they are combined. They combine atoms. They now group together, change some of properties so we can sense them. So you're talking about the different properties of matter, and I'm sure you have some sort of thought about what causes matter have different properties. About your atomas, what about them causes them to have different properties? Can you talk about that for a little bit? <clears throat> yes, yes. So we have something maybe tart, something maybe sweet, we say honey, but this restaurant terrible. It not have honey. I don't know why. But they give me this. They say, try this. These, these are pebbles, rocks of some kind. Rocks made of fruit. Fruit rocks. I believe they call fruit rocks. And when we eat something that tastes sweet, like fruit rocks. Mmm, fruit rocks. Very tasty. Very tasty fruit rocks. Then we know atomas are smooth, very smooth, because the tongue tells us the atomos smooth. It is sweet, must be smooth. But we try something more bitter. It may not be quite so smooth. They have scrapey sides. Tear. <coughs> Those atomos tear at my throat. Because they are scrapey atomos. Not smooth. <sighs> Fantastic. That was wonderful. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to tell us about real quick before we go? The restaurant found this place finds some honey. They say this smooth, smooth and very good, very, very good. So I try, I try a test. I test it. I, I test things. See how it tastes. 
See how it tastes. Good, good. Testing things like scientists. You can't stop me. No, I don't want to stop you. Do it. Try. restaurant at all. I'm afraid that that wasn't honey, <laughs> but hey, once you recover from those really sharp atomas, would you want to come back uh, and do some more talking for another video? Ha <laughs> ha yes. Okay, so it's goodbye for now from Mrs. Hinger, and yes, thank you, thank you all dear friends for watching show about Democritus. Everybody like Democritus. <laughs> Everybody love Democritus. <laughs> Have a cheerful day. Stay cheerful, my friends. Stay cheerful. Salud! We're wishing you a good bye, a good night, and a good tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>